hello, hello, my little Mardi Gras mavens and masters. Um, happy Fat Tuesday, which is something I have not celebrated in um, like 20 years. <laughs> so I'm going old school and I have, yes, I know how ridiculous I look. I look like a Shih Tzu. I've got an exposed forehead, a super red face and no eyebrows. So I'm going to fix that. Don't you worry. We're getting there. Hi, Christy Minica Smith. Yeah, yeah, but you'll always be Christy Minica. Stacy Brown. Hi, Stacy. Christine Ever. You're so loyal. And hi, Sandy. Um, so if you're going out tonight and celebrating, I would love to know if you are. So give me some hearts and thumbs up if you're going out. And hopefully this will be timely enough that you can do your makeup in a way that is totally wearable. That, so you're not going to look ridiculous, but you'll still look very festive and fun. Cheers to Fat Tuesday. I had to use this cup because it has the Fleur de Lis. And that's just what you do when it's Mardi Gras. So we have some new foundations coming out. Um, however, I still like for all of my clients to have two foundations. So I'm gonna be using a mix of Shinto Zero and Shinto Three. Um, gonna just dive in with my damp sponge. I, oh, I forgot to tell y'all, I am using, um, hi Rachel, I'm using, um, kind of my old products. So I'm sort of showing you guys um, what life was like before Limelight. Um, and also what you can use at home if you don't have some of these products or they're just not in your budget or you need to wait or you're waiting on your order or what have you. Um, I just wanna make sure that you guys know that there are alternatives that you don't have to have everything that I have. So I'm gonna take this old sponge. Why is this sponge that's $5 any different than our sponge that's like $24 because when you put this one in the sink and get it damp or try to wash it you're gonna see pink dye coming out which is just kind of weird so it's got dyes in it um, and it's only gonna stand up to being washed and cleansed a couple of times and you can even see some little black spots like it's already molding so um, I'm gonna use the other end um, and I'm desperate I gave a client my makeup hi Mike Hi, Heather. Hi, Ginger. Angela. Um, okay, so I'm going to get started. I'm going to go into Shinto Zero and Shinto Three with a big twist. And there is the product. And then I'm just going to... And no worries, right? Holy crap, that's way too dark. Because I used Shinto like five or something instead, <laughs> instead of the one I was supposed to use. But that's okay. These mistakes are awesome because Limelight's foundation is botanical wax based. So when I say that the foundation is wax based, immediately people are like, oh, what, what is that going to feel like on my face? Like a candle on my face? No. Um, however, what it does mean, and this is such a good thing. Hi, John. Hi, Marisol. Um, is that it's not soaking into your skin so it's not gonna dry I can sit here and talk your ear off and I might um, and it's not gonna soak into my skin skincare gets into your skin and into your bloodstream in like less than 30 seconds it's crazy um, so your skincare needs to be very pure um, your makeup however it's not as much of a concern if the product is wax based because it's not going any lower than your skin so what that means in application purposes is that when you do this and you go oh crap that's not the right color who cares i'm just going to go back into the lighter one and i'm going to blend it out and if i've got too much makeup on um, it's not going to soak in, so I'm just going to be able to use a dry part of the sponge and just kind of absorb some of that off. But I'm going to take what I have on my cheeks now, because that's plenty for probably my whole face, and I'm just going to start buffing it in. And that's totally what I get for using foundations I haven't used before on a live. I'm going to go right over my eyelids. Because my face is so red tonight, I took a super hot shower, and I've been sweating my butt off all day cleaning a friend's closet um, in this beautiful home that they failed to put a air conditioning vent in the closet 
which just goes to show you that when men design houses, they don't think about how often women change their clothes. You need to be nice and cool. It's hard work changing clothes. All right, so obviously when I do this backwards, I screw it up. So here we go. Now you can see the colors, zero, and then this is the one I should have used. All right, you can see the redness starting to disappear. I'm just bouncing this off and on. We don't really wanna scrub it in, just kind of bounce. Hi, Natalie. Hi, Linda, oh my gosh, I have not talked to you in so long. I'm so glad you're popping in. All right, so I'm gonna swipe y'all aside for just a minute and focus on the redness in my chin and the redness right here and just kind of layer that up until it all goes away. Still just a tiny bit orangey. So I'm gonna use a little bit of that lighter color. And because this isn't soaking into your skin, whatever you're not using is just being pushed into the sponge. So yes, you're wasting a little bit of product because you're using a sponge. A brush is sometimes a better choice if you're really conscientious about that and you really wanna stretch your product out. But when you sell limelight and you get 20% off, 35% in my case, because I'm awesome, um, then you don't really care because you get it super cheap. And just in case anybody's wondering, our foundations are $36 each. So that is not near as much as this little baby that I used to use before Limelight that I've had because I just can't throw it away or bring myself to sell it on eBay. Um, $60 for this can, it lasts about 30 days if you wear it every day. And that's the one that I recommend to people if they don't wanna buy Limelight for one reason or another. So $60, day, $60 30 days, $36, at least 90 days and that's if you're putting it on every single day of the week it takes very very little product still kind of see some redness now because this is all totally mobile and I can keep adding when you add makeup to makeup like where my chin is I want that redness to go away. If I keep pushing hard, I'm not gonna get that layered effect that I need to make the redness go away. So when you're pushing makeup onto your skin, you can use quite a bit of force. When you're putting makeup on top of makeup, you have to use a little bit more finesse. So your touch is just a little bit lighter. And then I'm gonna try to get, um, actually I'm gonna put concealer on right there. It's still a little red, pink and red over here. Okay, and you can see my collarbone, pretty much a perfect match. No streaking, all looking close. It's very realistic. So this is the product. I'm gonna bring y'all back. Hi, oh, me again. Oh, me again. You used to be like my number one supporter. Where have you been? Um, anyway. So your skin already looked great. Well, that's because I have amazing skincare and I use One Drop Wonder and Sotox. So um, yes, you're right. I do have amazing skin, but I have not always. Like six months ago, I posted a picture recently of what my face looked like just six months ago. And, and I was so glad that somebody, someone had asked me to do that because I had no idea how big the difference was. I knew my skin looked better, but it's it's hard to know exactly how much until you go back and really look. I forgot to put on my primer spray, whatever. I kind of always forget that. Not always, a lot. It's good All right, so I was saying before I got distracted that you have to set this makeup. Because it's not soaking into your skin, because there's no alcohol in it that's making it dry as it sits on your face, you have to set it. Holy cow, where is, where is it y'all? Um, my setting powder is with a client whose makeup hasn't come in yet and she needed it so I gave her mine. So you can set this with baby powder. I do not recommend that you do this on a regular basis. Um, baby powder has quite a bit of talc. Our products also have some talc, um, sorry, but they're much better in general. Um, 
for long-term use and it's not going into your skin anyway so again it doesn't necessarily matter it's just that some people have a very um it's just sort of the principle of of things that talc is a byproduct and it's just not regulated well okay setting powder no idea so you know what it's mardi gras who needs setting powder i am going to use are you ready for this uh, shimmer powder probably gonna look like a pearl when I get done but that's okay I also left my client all of my brushes so if you don't have brushes you're gonna struggle like I am tonight searching for I don't know a basting brush out of the kitchen to set things with we'll see all right my glass is empty that's gonna be a problem uh, okay hey girls y'all got any makeup brushes laying around this was very well thought out do not be intimidated by my extreme organization and high level of skill. Please, don't be, don't be intimidated. Come on, come on, come on. I didn't really think this through. Now they're fighting over who's going to give me the makeup brush. Really? Is that really worth fighting over? Hey, can somebody give me a brush, please, and stop fighting? Thank you, doll. Oh, these are all her brushes. My six-year-old has her own brush set, which would mostly, holy crap, girl, what have you been using? Give me a towel. I need a towel. Towel. I didn't have that either. So, how are y'all doing? <laughs> you aren't a turkey. Use a human brush. Do turkeys use fake brushes not sure where you're going with that christine you might need to put the cocktail down honey all right i'm just cleaning this off on a towel get lost and go fill up this wine i love you see the manipulation in play there master manipulator of children anyway all right so i'm going to be using this brush for pretty much everything tonight because I am ill prepared. Um, but before I use that, I'm gonna use some concealer. I have the number two concealer here. Thank you for the laughs and hearts. Um, and thank you for not all just completely leaving me right there. Um, this one is two shades darker than the zero that I usually use, but still incredibly effective. And if some of you already have that zero concealer and you find yourself wanting to clean up under your eyes, without wearing foundation. Sometimes I'll just wear concealer and bronzing powder and no foundation. This is a great backup concealer to have. It'll probably last you the rest of your life if you don't use it all the time um, because you won't have to blend it in so much. It's gonna be more the color of your natural skin if you're Caucasian in any way, shape or form. Um, trust me, this is the color that you need. Without even seeing your face, I know this. All right, so this is gonna get rid of those last little bits of pink that I have left. Oh, I lost someone. We're gonna go all the way down here because we want this skin right here that's nice and taut with, a, with the zygomatic arch bone underneath it. It's the occipital bone, but that's called the zygomatic arch. This is soft and squishy. And so we want this to look the same as this. And we're cre by doing that, we're creating an optical illusion. There's a huge moth on the mirror, kind of creepy. Uh, maybe that's good luck or something. Down the bridge of the nose with any extras. Now I'm going to do another layer. It's like a huge moth, y'all. It's huge. And it's obviously attracted to the light. But stay out of my wine moth. Okay. All right, a little more down the bridge of the nose. I'm going to use this just like you would, number zero. I like to layer it on because I really like for this to look flush with this. It's not, it's recessed, it sits further back, but when you make them the same color, it appears as if that skin is flush, which makes you look so much more awake and younger. Even if you have fine lines and wrinkles, the color, so when you look at yourself like this, you're gonna notice the fine lines and wrinkles, but nobody sees you like this, nobody. 
everybody else sees you like this. They're looking into your eyes and the rest of your face is just kind of coming into focus around your eyes, as long as there's nothing ridiculously distracting like pearlescent eyeshadow right under your brow. Hmm? Hi, Taryn. Um, anyway. I forgot what I was saying. Somebody could remind me if it was important, but if y'all don't care, we'll just move right on. Mothra. All right, I have more wine now. Thank you, children. And I'm gonna set this with this random Too Faced setting powder. Can you see that? Um, this is what I used before I joined Limelight. Um, it's kind of a dual, it's a very light shimmer. It doesn't have a lot of glow to it. So I'm gonna set under here. But you can also use baby powder. If I was using baby powder, I would put um, a little bit of baby powder in on a tissue and then put my brush on it because that's gonna help disperse some of that baby powder. You don't need much and you really don't want the buildup of the baby powder. You just need that little top skim coat to set the foundation. And then the foundation kind of becomes a whole different animal. Like it's not going anywhere. It's waterproof, it's everything proof. But without a setting powder, it's very transferable. It's gonna come off on your shirt, on your face, on your, I mean, on your hand if you rub your face. Um, so I, wah, did y'all see that? Um, I am using now Hula by Benefit. Um, this is one of their bronzing powders that does not have any shimmer in it. It's just a few shades darker. Kind of like that foundation I put on a little while ago. Hi, Charlotte. Marty. Babe, were you trying to say Mardi Gras, but you fell asleep? What happened? Um, as you can see, I'm layering this on and layering this on and layering this on. We're normally, um, with our Limelight Perfect Bronzer, um, which is perfect for everyone, it happens a lot faster. But, like, literally, y'all, I'm just going back and forth. This is such a good exercise for, for me to do. I, I'm kind of forced to do it because Charlotte has my makeup. But it's really beneficial because you kind of forget after you sort of take it for granted that your limelight is so effective. My face is super shiny because I used <laughs> luminescent powder to set my face, but this is not luminescent. So I'm hoping we'll tame some of that. Okay. Wow. All right blush. I do have my blush, all of my blushes. Oh. Charlotte, you have number four in your kit that I left you, and that's the one I ordered you. All right, that's a little more than I need, so I'm going to go back to my sponge and just kind of blend it out a little bit. Hey, Gary. I have not talked to you in so long. Are you still like the most crazy, like adrenaline junkie ever and constantly hurting yourself? I'm just curious. I have a hole in my lip. Um, I remember you being like so wheels off in your attempts to scare the shit out of yourself. All right, so this is gonna be fun. Now we're getting to the Mardi Gras makeup. I'm gonna use a Mary Kay eye primer that I used to have, and I love this eye primer. We don't actually have an eye primer. I use the concealer as an eye primer, but to be perfectly honest, it's not ideal as an eye primer um, unless you have really dry skin. This product, you see I put it on with this finger and I'm using this dry finger to sort of absorb some of that off. Okay, that's going to help all of your shadows blend. It's going to make them show up a little bit more punchy. Um, and then for shadows, I'm using a Ben Nye palette and some crappy brushes. Yay, this should be fun. Let's see what kind of crap we want to use first. Oh, the girls gave me a decent one. Okay, this is a decent. 
It's hot freaking pink. Y'all, seriously, they don't listen to me. Okay, I'm cleaning my brush from the hot pink. Because apparently that's the only color that exists. You don't get hurt often? Didn't you break like every bone in your body or was that just the old days? Now that you're older and more fragile, you don't get hurt as often? Not sure I believe you. Um, or maybe I just remember that one time that you got hurt and I'm thinking that you always got hurt because of there was just that one time. I don't know. But wasn't it like really serious? And it was before I met you. Anyway, I miss our sushi lunch dates and all of your craziness. Gary, um, for any of you that are watching and listening, is, I don't know, pretty much the most badass photographer in the country. Right up there with Kevin Girage in my book, but a totally different style. All right, I'm going in with a green flat Ben Nye powder. This stuff is super pigmented, and this is a pro product. already looks kind of muddy and not super bright like in the in the pan it's like emerald green but when I put it on it's like forest green so I'm gonna go all the way to the tear duct but I'm not gonna go all the way to the outside I'm gonna keep that nice and dark with a black Oh, yes, I do. I have all my shadows. But limelight doesn't make an emerald green, so. Um, make an olive green that looks like a witch's face. So, if you're trying out for Wicked, I got you covered. All right, see, I'm having to turn this brush. I would typically be doing this with uh, Limelight's number 11 brush. If you don't have that brush, Go to my website right now and please buy it. It's like $12, y'all. It is the best brush for packing shadow. So if you're not getting this effect when you're putting shadow on, I mean, this can save you from having to do liner. Do you see that? It's just thick, dark eyeshadow. You could do it with brown. You could do it with blue. You could do it with purple. You can do it with gray, black, whatever. But if you don't have a good brush to really pack it on with and it starts falling all over your face, it's going to be a mess. And this brush is not ideal. It's nice and stiff, but it's not the right shape. So I'm having to turn it and it's just taking me more time. The right brushes are like power tools. If you're interested in a brush set, it is such a smart investment, you guys. You have no idea how your makeup game will change and how much you'll enjoy it. Like just, Get back to the time when you enjoyed makeup. That has been such a big deal for me. Y'all hear that fat pregnant dog in the back? <sighs> She's crazy. Anybody need a golden doodle? I'm selling a lot of shit, aren't I? Dogs, makeup. What do you want? No, you can't have your brush back. I might need it. Which one? The big one? No, the, the, the other one. No, I need it. This is more important. Sorry. Use a Q-tip. Here. Here's Q-tips. That wasn't very nice. That's not very nice. Like, by 7 o'clock, do y'all just not want to be a mommy anymore? I don't really want to be a mommy anymore. I mean 7 a.m. Um, okay, so now I am going to take a dark purple. I'm going to use the same brush because it's the only crappy brush I have. And I'm going to attempt to do a... Thanks, Mike. Um, did you prime your lids? Yes, I primed my lids. Hi, Haley. Uh, with a Mary Kay primer, eye primer. It's a great primer if you if you don't have one and you're looking for one. It's very affordable and of course you gotta know a Mary Kay lady. And I'm not really sure I support that. I'm just kidding. I support it. Alright, so a cut crease is where 
your base, well, you can put it in your real crease, but when you have a droopy eyelid like I do, we want to we want to create a fake crease. So I want it to look like this is where my crease is instead of right here with this droop right there. All right, so I'm going to kind of sketch it out first. It's not a very good sketch. Here we go. I'm gonna bring it into the corner of my nose just a little bit more. We went to the tear duct with the green, but I'm kind of going past that and into that little curvy area with the purple. And now I'm gonna fill it in. It's very dangerous to do this without really good brushes. Um, because your blending is gonna be important and anyway, we're just gonna make it work. All right. And I'm gonna bring this down here and just fill it in. We're gonna worry about all the finesse later. We're just getting the color on nice and bold and kind of where we want it. And then we'll, then we'll worry about blending it. Can y'all shut the door please? Nope, not now. Shut the door, please. Okay. So the goal is to make that look like my crease, which honestly is already there. Yes, I look like Ursula right now. But, you know, this will show just how badass I am. Yeah, I, I or how completely not badass I am. All right, a cut crease is supposed to have a very sharp line and mine's still just a little bit. But you know what you can fix that with? Glitter. All right, now getting this one to match is gonna be a little bit, okay, so here's what you need to know. I have my arm pressed up against my chest, okay? And I'm going to even use this hand to kind of hold this one. Michelle, I just said glitter, you missed it. I'm gonna use glitter, just for you, girl. Um. I am going to hold on to my hand so that I'm totally steady. If you're leaning over the bathroom counter trying to do this with your arms kind of floating in the air, you're shooting yourself in the foot. All right, so. See if I can get the outline first. I'm going to bring it into the corner, connect it to the green, and now I'm going to fill it in. Fun, right? You could totally do this. If you practice, practice is so important. You can't do this when you have 20 minutes before you have to walk out the door. Aw, thanks, Shelly. Shelly, give me hots and thumbs up. Have you been practicing? Okay, and you can see how many passes I'm having to make with this product. And even though this is a professional product, it is not a limelight professional product. And therefore I'm having to go in and in and in again because my brush and my product are not as, well, the product is not as pigmented and the brush is not as effective. So a brush can be ineffective for a lot of reasons. It can have the wrong shape. It can have the wrong density of hairs. It can have the wrong type of hairs that don't displace the product correctly. So I have a little kick on the other one I'm gonna add in here. There's a lot of reasons why good brushes. So if you're in that kind of like, I mean, a brush is a brush, like right go ask a painter if a brush is a brush see what they say still kind of spotty and it does not look smooth this never happens with my limelight but it's not really important right now because we're adding glitter and glitter is the great light diffuser that's why everybody loves it because it diffuses light Right, Gary, are you still watching? Gary, if you're still watching, I have to admit I'm a little bit worried. Just just a, just a tiny bit. Um, okay, I do have my Limelight palette. 
And that picture I posted, I should probably look that up, but I think I can kind of remember. There was some gold in the middle. Stuff I'm jealous waiting on mine, but using, yeah. Don't be jealous, you have all my good stuff. I'm forced to use this. Looks like it's been chewed up by Adele. That's the pregnant dog. All right. Oh, God dang it, did y'all see that? I swear, you can't make this shit up. Crap, stuff, whatever. Seriously, mom. Oh my God, there's two now. I have to drink. Okay, um, again, right now, our focus is on adding the color in sort of blocks, oh my God, um, where we need it, sorry. Um, so I'm going to take, here it is. Look at that sucker. That's not a tiny little moth. You have to die. I'm sorry, I squished your brains. Ugh. Um, okay. Um, so now I need some dark in this outside corner because if you don't ground your eyes on the outside corner, they're not going to look like they continue to the side of your head. That's sort of the magic that creating a dark corner does is it makes it look like it just kind of goes on forever. It's sort of like the effect that a black dress has on your fat hips. My fat hips, not yours, sorry. Okay. Um, so I'm just kind of going over, but do you see that? Like that black is on there with a crappy brush because this is a limelight black. And I barely have to do anything to get that effect. Uh-oh, earring fell out. The moth removed my earring. It did. So up in my kitchen that he just took my earring straight off. That's why he had to die. Don't feel sorry for him. All right, now I'm gonna fill in my bottom waterline, membrane, whatever you wanna call it, all the way from the tear duct. Do not start here and forget that this is part of your eye, okay? All the way from corner and connect it to what you just did and then bring it down up just a tad bit, okay? It's okay for this outside to be smudgy. All right? And you do that just by gently, you're, you're going, you're almost just tilting the brush down. Do you have anything that will remove the shoe polish? I won't be able to go anywhere with that. <laughs> yes, yes I do. Mike um, was my stepdad for many years and he used to let me practice putting makeup on him he was such a good sport i love you so dearly for that and when he would fall asleep i would put curlers in his hair and barrettes in his hair he was awesome still is all right so i'm just bringing it down the slightest little bit okay i'm not even picking the brush up i'm just sort of working it and lowering as I go. All right, um, now that I'm looking at it, I can see that the purple on this eye is not quite as arched as the other eye, so I'm just gonna add that. It's always easier to add than to take away, so just go with it. Totally screwed that up. All right, we're going with it. That's a little closer. It's not perfect, but nobody's gonna notice but you. Do not get obsessed over perfection. It's just not worth it. Done is better than perfect. Okay, moth guts, gotta go. Gonna clean off that brush. Yes, you have to do this when you don't have a brush for every product. That's why our brush set has 15 brushes because you really, literally, you have like a brush for every single product that you put on your face that you need a brush for. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go back in and add, what do y'all think, green or purple underneath the black right under here? Fix it with glitter. I, w I will, girl, I have some. Charlotte gave me some glitter today. I don't usually 
use glitter. But while I was cleaning out her closet, I found some and I told her, you can't wear this. You're not 12, but I can. Um, I don't know where my glitter went, but it's here somewhere. It'll show up. Anyway, glitter. I can't see anything past this light when I do it this dark. Anyway, did anybody have a suggestion? Okay, I'm plugged in and I shared. Oh, you are a good girl. Thank you so much. Aren't these earrings fun? You gave me these. Did you even know you gave me these? They were in that bag of stuff for the girls. Look at that shiny shiny all right nobody told me whether i should use green or purple so i'm gonna go green i'm just gonna do it on the inside corner and we're sort of making the black look like a green fade putting it a little bit onto the black and then pulling it down a little bit. Again, my arms are grounded against my side so that if my brush movements look so effortless, it is not because I'm really steady handed. I have a lot of experience, but it is mostly because I am totally solid. I am leaning on the counter. I have my arm against my side. I have this hand on the desk of a vanity. And so there is no room for wiggling. Um, I found in all of that crap that the girls had these like green colors. And so now I'm going to take the fluffy brush and we're going to start blending. Now again, gosh, if this isn't a commercial for a freaking brush set, I have never heard of one. Um, your brushes are not going to blend as effectively. You're going to go over this stuff a billion times in order to get the same effect that a really good brush would give you only just a couple of times. This really isn't a cut crease anymore, but I'm just kind of going with what I like. Um, so I'm going to add some of this green, this light, kind of more, less olivey green, a little bit over the green that I did, just to brighten it up a little bit. It has a little bit of pearlescence to it, and the one I used was totally matte. Yeah, see how that brings it alive? Hi, Stephanie Yonis, how are you? All right, there we go. Fat Tuesday makeup. Yes, I know I look like a Shih Tzu for those of you who are just joining. Um, I promise it's gonna all come together in the end. You have to trust the process. All right, I'm gonna put a little bit of this under here. All right, so it's getting a little, a little deep right here. There we go, that kind of cleaned it up. All right, so now brow bone, I'm going to use a gold, a light, a very light gold. It's called Pineapple of My Eye. This is a limelight color. I'm gonna clean off my brush. Um, and I do that either on a um, paper towel tonight because I didn't have a clean hand towel, but I usually just have a hand towel in my makeup drawer and I keep that drawer open and I just clean off my brush at that towel whenever I need to. All right, so this is pineapple of my eye. Your brow color should come all the way down, not on the tear duct, because you don't want to erase any of that purple and green that you did there, but it should come onto the nose all the way down to that area and stretch back up here. In general, there are reasons why you wouldn't do that, but in general, that's kind of the goal. All right, now we definitely don't have a cut crease anymore, so so much for that. We've blended away all of that crease color so it doesn't really have the same um, effect as a cut crease anymore. A cut crease would be really sharp. We can still do it with glitter if we want to, which we might if I can find the flipping glitter. Glitter. Where are you? Okay. Anyway, that's going to soften the brow bone. And now for the love of Pete, can we get some eyebrows on this face? 
Um, I'm gonna have to use this hideous dog toy and clean it off. I'm gonna use my setting powder. I don't even have a spoolie, so we're just gonna wing it. I'm gonna go into number 40, limelight number 40. And start brushing up, adding depth and color. I mean, your, um, the start of your eyebrow should start right where your tear duct is. Most people, it starts about right here, like where your first eyelash is. So bringing it in just a tad is going to make a big difference. It's going to be very hard for you to get used to at first, but it's going to make a big difference. And this brush is so thick, I'm not getting that tight um, line that my other brush usually gives me. That other brush that I use is called the Brow Tamer, and it's amazing. It's the one that I call the cheese cutter all the time because it's so sharp, like, it's so tight. Up and down. I mean, this brush is like, it's basically a hairbrush. It's a dog toy. It's a dog, it's a brush for dogs. Really freaking useless. Y'all, this is so good. It's making me appreciate my limelight so much more. I, I don't even know what else to do. I don't have a tight brush. Wait, you know what? The one that I used for the green, I did save a brush. Charlotte, I didn't give you this one <laughs> because apparently I knew that this was going to be a problem. You see how much tighter that is? This is not the brow tamer. This is just our eyeliner brush. Um, it's not even as tight as the other one. And when I say tight, I mean really sharp and pointed and you can make a really fine line with it. Y'all, that's such a huge difference. All right. Throwback hair day. Cheers. Okay. Now we got to do some finesse here. I have somewhere an old dazzle palette. Look at that. Don't get to use these colors very often, but this gold in here is like super shiny gold. So I am going to put that in the inside corner. Just gonna build up a little chunk of it. Put that right there. So normally I use that kind of crystal color in this inside area. And now we're using gold. It's a shimmery gold. Perfectly acceptable. And blend it into that purple. Make sure there's no sharp lines between the yellow and any of the other colors. You just want it to be like, I don't know where it stops and where it starts. It's magic. Okay. So, still waiting for the mermaid tutorial. I need a holiday to inspire me to do a mermaid tutorial. What holiday? Maybe 4th? No, not 4th of July. I need a reason to do a mermaid tutorial. I feel like a 42-year-old, 43-year-old woman trying to look like a mermaid is, I don't know, sort of like my 14-year-old trying to look like a 43-year-old. Just doesn't, just doesn't make sense. But if you give me a good enough reason, I will do it. Like send me a starfish to put in my hair or something. Okay, I gotta find that glitter. And you have to have something to put the glitter on with. And I promise glitter, so I don't wanna not make this happen. No holiday. Hey, Lynn Hopkins. Mardi Gras, mermaids in Mardi Gras. Is that a thing? I don't think so. No, seriously, I just, I just had it. Hang on, I'll be right back. Girls, did y'all take my glitter? They immediately say no. They didn't even think about it. Like, I, I don't know, did we take your glitter? Nope, no thoughts given. Oh, I bet it's in that black box. Did you take the black box? Is that 
funny? Yeah, that's really funny. Don't you wish you had a six-year-old and seven-year-old who loved makeup? It sounds like every girl's dream. Until they steal your makeup brushes and use them to paint. I'm not making this crap up. All right, I don't know if glitter's gonna happen, but I do have this really fun purple pencil that I thought about using just to add some shimmer. And this is the kind of shit you gotta stay away from, y'all, because this stuff is the kind of stuff that makes you like break out. It's this like rimmel cheap stuff. If you don't have sensitive skin, you're probably okay, but if your eyes are at all sensitive, don't use this. I'm probably going to regret this because my eyes are quite sensitive. But when Michelle wants glitter, what are you going to do? At least give the girl some sparkle. Okay. What do we need now? Fake lashes? Yeah? Who needs a fake lash lesson? Anyone? Mermaids are for reals. Okay. Yep, you're right. They are. They're about as real as the word reels. I know you're going to call me a vocabulary snob, but that's okay. I was trained well. Canyon High School, baby. Um, okay, so here is what I have learned. I don't know if any of you saw my... You're sensitive. You're about as sensitive as a... Shit, I don't have any quick comeback for something that's sensitive. Anyway, back to lashes. I should stick to what I know. I'm just going to stick that right there for a second. Oh, you know, it would be way funnier if I put it right here. Okay, I'm going to talk about these lashes while I stick this on my face. Because that's what I do. Humiliate myself for the good of the public. There we go. Okay, these are number 53 lashes. You can get them at Walgreens. You can get them at HEB, Walmart, like wherever. Um, it says right here, number 53. Lashes are kind of the same styles are uniform from brand to brand. So it's always either gonna be called babies or number 53. I'm really having a hard time looking at myself right now. Um, I have recently discovered a new lash glue that I really like. And a while back, I did a eyelash tutorial that I learned from Nikki Tutorials because I was having such a hard and ridiculous time putting lashes on myself. I can do it on other people all day long in like two seconds flat. Like I'm the fastest eyelash applier ever. And they're perfect every time. But when it comes to me, they're like crooked and sideways and it just, I mean, y'all seen it, you know. So, I'm like, how can I learn to do this? Because people are not going to trust me. So, I watched a tutorial by, like, a 23-year-old. That wasn't at all uh, a smack in the face. And I learned a lot from her. But she is typically wearing much bigger, fancier, and probably mink lashes that um, are just not something that I'm going to wear on a regular basis. And most of you are not either. Got it. Sorry, got to go. I should stick it out of my nose like a is there something on my face <laughs> double bat in the game um so basically the more you let the glue dry the better but you can't go too far with it and these lashes this particular style is not it is not necessary to cut them in half. So Nikki says, if you're using those big giant lashes, like, like Charlotte, like the ones that you like, if you will just cut them straight in the middle and put them on in two sections, which I know if you can't put on one, how are you going to put on the other? But it's actually much easier to put them on, um, in two sections because you're not dealing with that curve. Okay. So these things are curved and so is your eye. And y'all, that rimmel thing is already making my eyes water. Um, woo. So when you cut them in half, if you're dealing with big lashes, it makes it much easier to put them on. 
this particular style, number 53, which is what I've always used on brides, um, because it's very natural looking, it's, it gives quite a bit of a kick and they're, they're definitely not shy. I mean, they're there. Um, but they just blend in seamlessly. They don't have enough of a curve and enough weight to them to really necessitate cutting them in half. Um, so yeah, I'm losing you guys. I need to hurry up, shut the heck up and get back to work. Anyway, um, don't want too much glue. There is the amount of glue that I have and I really need to let that dry just a little bit. And while that's drying, I don't have a lip liner, do I? I think I left it with you, Charlotte. So I am gonna do the closest thing Oh yes, ash, it's practically purple. That is part of the Lottie collection. It is um, kind of on a closeout right now. I don't know that the price has been discounted, but um, we're not gonna have it forever. So if you love this color that I put on, you need to go order it now, because I'm not sure how long it's gonna last. And for the love of Pete, if you're not using makeup brushes, please at least order number 11. The full set, is $224, but if you bought them one at a time, you would end up paying $94 more. Like we offer a huge discount to just suck it up, use your tax money, unless you're an entrepreneur and you have to pay taxes and then you're dirt freaking poor right now. Ask me how I know, ask me. All right. So anyway, let that glue dry. I should have let it dry longer then I wouldn't be struggling right now. While I'm waiting for that to completely cure and as it cures, it shrinks so you'll feel a little bit of a pull and then it kind of becomes rubbery and you're done. I'm gonna put on some, I have to wipe this off, okay? Please don't get, it. it's better if you use a lip brush and a lip liner, but I don't have that available right now. So I'm gonna wipe this almost completely off. There's so much product and so very little needed in here that any of this extra is just gonna make it very difficult for you to get a nice clean look. This is called a doe foot. And I know that. Cause I know it's called, a, I know that it's called a doe foot because this is exactly what a doe's foot looks like. Like a deer. Prance, prance, prance. Now I know that. Because my freaking dogs bring them up on the porch all the time. Adele had one in her mouth today. And I'm thinking, did y'all kill that doe just now? And we're getting, I mean, how many, how many deer feet can there possibly be on 10 acres that they're just finding it? I'm really starting to think that they're just out like hunting like wolves. Seriously, as soon as they eat one, we have another one. All right. So this kind of works like a lip liner. Push the boundaries just a little bit. Make sure you're going over that vermilion border and not using the color of your lips as a, as a stopping point okay you want to go past that the white line the the ridge that's kind of around your lips is called the vermilion border and that's what you want to um, put your liner on and then your lipstick right over the top of that you don't you do the liner and then the lipstick stops short of the liner it's all one the liner is basically just there to create a nice waxy border to keep everything in place and to keep it from bleeding and also to keep um, the lines filled, the teeny tiny little striations that we have around our lips to keep those filled in. That wax kind of fills in those little gaps. Okay, so I have lashes on. This is a little hard to see. I'm going to go underneath. I'm going to start at the base. And I want to push these lashes 
my lashes into the fake lashes so that they become kind of seamless. And if the lashes, if you haven't worn lashes often and you're not used to them, once you get the mascara on your lashes, I'm kind of setting my eyelid on it and then wiggling it a little bit and that's sort of pushing those um, lashes into the fake lashes, my, my real lashes into the fake lashes. Hi, Nina. Nina is my newest team member. She's so much thinking fun. She lives in Stiegler, Oklahoma. Do y'all know where that is? Anyone? Give me hearts. All right, so start at the base. Find your real lashes. Now roll your eye up. Push them into those fakies. Now, if you did a good job placing them, Michelle knows where Stiegler is, really? Where's Chris live, Michelle? Oh, I know where she lives. I've mailed her something. Like, okay, now you see the, that, that little white stripe there between my real lashes and where the fake lashes were glued? That is not because I'm not a professional. It's because my phone is not the same thing as a mirror. Okay, and we're gonna fill that in because we can't leave it like that. That is very distracting. So we got a couple of choices. We can brush these lashes down and then push them back up, brush them down, push them back up. And that kind of filled in the gap. Or alternatively, I can take a liner brush, put a little bit of mascara on it and go up underneath See right here, it's not quite placed right. It's a little high, and so I've got that little gap right there. But if I fill that in with, normally I would use my liquid liner pencil, but I gave that to Charlotte. I'm gonna fill that in with black. Push those lashes down, and that's gonna take care of that gap for me. It's really, amazing how easy some of these fixes are that I think some people look at and they go, oh my gosh, I gotta start all over. Like I totally ruined it. I gotta take these lashes off and fix it. If you'll sit down and practice, you'll find that you can probably fix it. And if you find yourself in that situation and you're practicing, you have all the time in the world to send me a message and say, oh, this is what happened last night while I was practicing my makeup. Okay, first of all, I'm probably gonna send you something free just for practicing. Um, but also, I can troubleshoot with you. So I'm taking my liner brush and I scraped off some mascara and I'm just gonna paint these little bad boys. I got a little bit on there, but we're gonna let that dry and then remove it. It happens to everybody, even when your hands are braced and you're rock solid and you haven't had anything to drink. All right, clean up the brush, put this away. Woo, look at those lashes. Okay, so I got some mascara right here underneath which, you know, honestly, you really can't tell if I look, if I show you closely, you can see that that's just a little bit dark right there. But here's the point. If you get it on your nose, if you get it on your face, if you get mascara anywhere, um, you really want to let it dry. It's so hard to do because your instinct is to immediately wipe it off because it's still wet, right? But if you've set your foundation and you're using the Limelight system, um, even if you're not using the products, I set this foundation with that um, shimmery powder. And so when that dries, I should be able to just flick it off. Also because there's um, eyeshadows under there. So, letting it dry. There we go, should be dry. And then I would use my concealer brush. That would be the perfect brush to use for this. But the tightest brush I have is probably this one. And so I'm going, Always when you're removing, go toward the nose. If 
if you're cleaning something up, you want to kind of dig underneath it and then sort of flip it off. And that's just going to take whatever was there right off. All right, so let's assess a few things here. First of all, my face is way too freaking shiny. Um, whew, okay. Uh, secondly, the cut crease didn't really work out and this shimmery crap is not as pretty as glitter would be. Um, so I really want to add some more. We just, we just, it just needs more. Y'all can, y'all can go to bed if you have to. I, I totally get it. I won't, I won't make you stay up with me. There we go. You see how much light that brings to that inside corner and making this eye literally look a quarter inch longer than this one, longer this way, horizontally. That's what I was missing. I was just too pansy ass with it. Cause I always say perfect sits right next to disaster. If you're not willing to make a disaster, you're never gonna know where perfect is. All right, now that's some freaking Mardi Gras makeup right there. And you know what, that gold is not blowing my skirt up. So I'm gonna go over that with some of that green. Do not be afraid to bring your liner down. Bring it down, bring it downtown. Practice it when it doesn't matter. And you'll see, you'll be like, oh my gosh, I had no idea I could go that far. And as long as you're keeping it soft and you're using a good brush, you should be able to bring your liner down probably twice what you normally do. But here's the trick. It has to be balanced on the top with at least twice as much dark color. So you girls that have your liner really thick on the bottom and then you're doing a light color on top or your liner on top is only half the thickness of the liner on bottom, you're, you're making your face look a little bit like this, okay? It doesn't work. The ratios have to be correct. You have to have, it, let's say you do, like I have a lot of dark, this isn't eyeliner, but it's dark green and dark purple, okay? So there's lots of layers of dark all the way to here. So I could probably bring this down even further and still be safe. You just wanna make sure that the opposite is not happening where your liner on the bottom and your darkness on the bottom is so thick and on the top it's just really thin and you've got other light colors going on. It should be balanced, the, flip it the other way. It's gonna be difficult for you to look at for a little while, but I promise you, everyone you know will tell you Oh my gosh, you look amazing. What are you doing? And you'll be like, well, let me just tell you this lady's website and you should just go buy all her makeup. Y'all, I seriously cannot stand to look at them. I thought that this would work out. I connect, I reconnected with a friend that I knew 40, uh, not 40, 20 years ago. And <laughs> as I was putting these crazy earrings on, I was like, what would be some good Mardi Gras here? And I was like, oh, well, the last time I went to Mardi Gras, I think I did this like, like pulled back little thing with the big poof back behind it. Oh my gosh. Whatever has happened to my face between now and then, this is not working. 